Hi, it's Lisa, the Arnie Lava. What are you guys up to? Hmm? It's been a couple weeks since I've been here. Um, not that I was fluffing off. Okay, I was fluffing off. I didn't do much. I did, uh, I worked on my temperature scarf the first week. And then this past week was, um, as I lovingly refer it, my staycation, which was, I don't want to go to work itis. Um, I had a serious case of, I don't want to go to work itis. Um, when I filled out the paperwork, I initially filled it out to have the, this week coming up off. And, uh, well, I started to fill it out. And I thought, I don't want to wait that long. Um, so I filled it out for last week and I took the whole week off and, you know, I did some organization out in the living room and kitchen. Um, because the apartment complex that I live in holds a mortgage. Um, the bank comes in every so many years and does a mortgage inspection where they pick 40 apartments and they inspect them to make sure that everything is working. Your stove, your uh, pipes run clear, uh, things that need to be fixed have been fixed. Uh, all your smoke detectors work, all your your fuse box works, everything is in good working order, which is a good thing because they don't want to be holding a mortgage on some place that isn't being up kept because if the, it's not up kept, then people aren't going to want to live here. So it's okay. So, I mean, we had uh, the guys come through, the workers from the apartment complex, they come through every apartment first and make sure that everything is working um, because they don't know which 40 apartments the mortgage company is going to want to see. So they came through on Wednesday. Um, hopefully that means they're going to fix my stove. <laughs> um, my right hand burners don't work. Um, and no, it's not the pilot light. Yes, that's the first thing I checked. It's the igniter, so they've got to do uh, some work there. And then Thursday started my, I'm not doing nothing but crafts. Uh, that's, that, that's all Thursday. Um, I sat here and cut fabric. And did a few things. So let me show you what I've been up to. As I said, bef uh, before I went off on vacation, I uh, was working on my temperature scarf. Let me get my the extra yarn out of here. And, whoopsie, see, I just lost one of them. Okay. My point protector slash... I don't want to lose a stitch thing. So anyway, I know we didn't discuss this the last time around because, uh, or I didn't, I did discuss it, but I was still in February, but I am now in March. Yep. That's the March. So the last time we talked and I showed you this, I'm really glad I got some good light today. Um, I've got my blinds that are right behind me open. So now you can see the color changes right here. These are the two darkest days. Um, this really dark one right here was for minus 17. So, uh, yeah. But now that we're in February, we've uh, in March, we've only got a couple of low days to go. And then I can start on the highs. Um, so... I did that, and uh, 
So it's getting quite big, quite large now. Um, this is with the beads, even though I'm not doing beads anymore because it stressed me out. This is without um, a good seven feet long is what I'm gathering. Okay, wait a minute, time out. It tried to lose a stitch on me. I won't let it. Okay, let me put this back in my bag here. This is my Kathy bag. I love it because it's pink and gray. And when I was in high school, pink and gray were the it things. So, I did that. And then, Thursday, I put my first zipper in a bag. And here it is, big and long and big, and it holds all the yarn for my temperature scarf. Other than what's already in the bag, but I mean, that stuff can go in here too. I just took that out because um, I was working on it. So I did that. I, I made this. This is mine. Put the zipper in. I'm really proud because I put a zipper in. Um, that's the very first zipper I've ever done in any project. Okay. So, right while I was there, I cut, I had some bee fabric. And I cut, and I made it into a bag. Okay, I've, I've got enough for four bags, but two of them are really big. Two of them are, um, hang on, let me see, from seam, to seam, 20 inches, from top to bottom seam, no clue, hang on, uh, 12 inches. Now, I put a black band on here, and then I put a little ladybug on each end. All right, so that's one, and then this is number two. This one's got a white one. Again, ladybugs. What can I say? I don't know that I'm selling these, but I may give them away to certain people. That's two. Um, these ones still need tops, but they're small. And then I already have, hang on. Don't go nowhere. I'll be right back. See, I told you I'd be right back. Okay, so I have one done with the horse fabric. He didn't get a ladybug because I wasn't thinking about the ladybugs until after I got him done. So I did him. And then I got two more like this that I still have to do. And they have green on the inside. Okay, and the coolest thing about every one of these people is I remembered to turn it in before I sewed. Unlike the first one. So yay me. So I got that done. Now, I was gifted by a friend who inherited 60 blue squares. Now, the blue squares also came with a little yellow piece of paper. This isn't it, but a yellow piece of paper like this. Oh. And it told me what the person was doing. Believe it or not, she left me a clue. I can't find it. Um, she gave me the size of the hook. Whoa, you're, I'm losing you. Hang on. I got this new thing to set you up on. And I almost lost you. Anyway, I got blue squares. 
and she gave me the hook size and then I and all the fa uh, yarn she gave me two darker blues I've got one skein still of this one and some white and I put some edges on like three or four of them but what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to turn them into a shawl like Miss Jan Carruthers has one that's she put it with the diamond made diamond shapes and hooked them together so I think that's what I'm gonna do so I've got 60 of them did I tell you that I have 60 well I had 59 and seven ninths seven eight is really close to being done anyway I think I got one more thing uh, don't go nowhere okay so back in February I started the raglan sweater the same one that Pam Yarny Nana's doing or was doing she was doing hers with James C. Brett and I had seen that and said, ooh, I want to do it. So I ordered enough James C. Brett to make sure I could do it. Well, I started working on it while I was off. And then I had to frog it. Not because I wanted to, but because I realized that I created, instead of creating a sweater... Yes, I created an infinity sweater, which means I twisted when I joined. And you can't have that. So I frogged it. And I'm now, this is the neck. So it goes like this. And I've impressed myself because there's the increases right where they're supposed to be. And I'm having fun with this. I thought this was going to be worse than what it is, and so far I'm okay with it. Um... Thankfully, my darling daughter is smaller than I am, but I'm doing it for me. And then if it comes out too small, my darling daughter will have it. So right now, it looks like it'll fit. I got room, yeah. But I also know Pam had room. So. That's what I've been doing. I've been working on my sweater. I know this is a little late because it's almost summer. Well, it's springtime. But I figure by the time I get it done, it'll be fall. So, let's see. It's everything I've been up to until yesterday. Um, yesterday, a friend of mine has a son who is autistic. And another son who isn't. And her son that isn't. Wait a minute, you're falling again. And the son who isn't autistic graduates from high school this year. And he's the younger son. And so she wanted to do something with the kids that they liked. And both of them said, you know, we used to go to water parks when we were younger. And uh, there's an indoor water park down in Ohio, I think. Um... And 
they're all around. Um, the Great Wolf Lodge and uh, Kalahari, to name two. They're the bigger ones in the area. Um, but she didn't have the money and everything to go to these bigger places. So there was a place out in Sterling Heights that's about an hour away. And as far as the, the drive goes, it's about 35 miles. Um, anyway, she said, hey, we're going to end up with two extra passes to the pool. Why don't you and Sarah come? Because she knows that with my fibromyalgia, um, the doctor has asked me to start doing pool work. He says, because it will relax me and it's also like a massage for my, my joints. Um, I was hesitant because I've been in pools, um, since I've started getting steroid shots in my knees. And every time I went in the pool, my knee would lock up. So I was hesitant. But we went because Sarah loves pools. And I knew I needed to go. So we went and the pool was not bath water warm. It was cool. Um... So, it didn't lock up my knee, and I enjoyed the lazy river, which was more like a lazy creek, because it was so small. Um, I went into the big pool, and then I went into the, jacu uh, the hot tub. Uh, Sarah, who is afraid of heights... And he has severe um, anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder. Um, she went by herself up to the second floor, up to the, the slide, and came down the slide. Um, I think the only reason... She did it for a couple of reasons. One, it, it looked fun, and, and she knew she was okay because she knew I was there, and she knew there were lifeguards there. Um, and there were a string of buoys so that you're not supposed to cross these buoys because that's where the slide comes in, and they don't want people coming in as other people are coming down the slide at full force. Um, But it was about, I was about three feet away from her where she came out of the slide. And I was in the water and, and I could have got her if anything happened. And she knew that. I made sure she saw me before she came down. And she came down the slide and she didn't even let a scream out of her like a, a little girl. Because I'd seen some other people who did. And I was really impressed. Um, but we had a great time and I posted a picture on Instagram of me about an hour, about a half hour after I got out of the pool. I was back in the hotel room. And it was everything in me not to fall asleep. I was very relaxed. Um, last night, I can honestly tell you that Sarah and I were both in bed before midnight. Uh, we both slept rather well and rather late until today, so... We definitely exercised yesterday, and we had a good time, and we slept rather well. So that was the bomb diggity of bomb diggities, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I did take a couple of videos um, driving. I was going to show you guys the sights, but there was no sights, and the one sight that I did see that I loved um, was completely off-camera. Um, the new thing that I've got that I'm holding on to right now because it keeps trying to slide, um, it actually is a mount inside my car. And since I don't like to drive distracted, I was just going to do a video for you guys to see. 
Um, and this way, you know, you could see what I was seeing, but you couldn't see everything that I saw, which was, I saw a pretty waterfall and stuff like that. But, uh, I'll start taking you out and about with me now that it's getting to be better weather. Um, have a lot of cool places that I'd like to show you all. Including, but not limited to. Uh, they now call it the Henry Ford. When I was growing up, it was Greenfield Village and Henry Ford Museum, but now it's just the Henry Ford. Um, but it is Greenfield Village where um, the Wright Brothers shop is, George Carver's cabin is, uh, Webster's house is from Webster's Dictionary. Uh, I said the Wright Brothers shop. There were there are other shops to go into, um, jewelry stores from back in the day, and there's a place where you can watch glass blowing being done, and um, it's an actual working farm, and they do it the way they did it back in the day. And they used to have a boat, and I don't know if the boat still goes, but it was one of the old time uh, paddle boats, and it just went around um, a giant moat, really. It was man-made, so, um, but they have a train that goes through there, um, and at one point you're high enough when you're walking up and over, out in the back you can see what part of the Ford test track for their vehicles, um, that's in Dearborn, which is, um, where Henry Ford lived, was in Dearborn, um. He loved Dearborn, so that's where the main headquarters for Ford is and things like that. Um, I was also wanted to take you to Belle Isle this year. They've now made it a state park. Um, take you to the riverfront. I've got to go downtown for some... Uh, ancestry work and some stuff because I need my passport. I need to get a passport. Um, so I got to get a copy of my marriage license, a copy of my divorce decree, yada, yada, yada. Um, and some ancestry stuff. I want a, a copy of my grandparents' marriage license. And maybe if I can take you, if it stays this like this, which is not rainy, um, I can take you down to uh, Heinz Drive. I say down to Heinz Drive because it's in a valley. Um, and as long as it doesn't rain, we can get through. Um, if it rains because it is in the valley, it floods very easily. And the joke is... Um, it's, it's a standard joke here in Michigan, in the Detroit area, that, um, hey, Heinz Park is closed. It's the spring. Why don't you just tell us when Heinz Park is open? Because um, as soon as it rains, everybody just automatically assumes Heinz Park is closed. And if they don't, they should, because it's just always closed. It floods very easily. And I'll show you why, because of the, the water being so close. Um... Might take you to the Yankee Air Museum. If I can ever find out where it is. I work at the airport. Where the Yankee Air Museum is. And I can't tell you where it is anymore. Um, about 10 years ago. It burnt down. I was on my way to work and I saw um, all this smoke. And it looked like it was right off the runway. And I thought for certain a, a plane had crashed. And uh, I hurried up and got to work. And when I walked into the building, because we're up on the second floor and we we're facing that way, you could just see the flames. And... Uh, there, there's what's called notices to airmen, which is a NOTAM. And uh, the, the NOTAM for 
Willow Run said uh, there was a fire at the end of the runway and it was the Yankee Air Museum. Um, the cool thing is they got a bunch of stuff out and they got a bunch of planes. Um, it was ruled um, an electrical fire, but um, some of the old uh, planes that they were working on, people literally pushed out of the burning hangar um, because they used to take in the they, they've got warbirds over there from World War Two and World War One. They they take them and they work on them and they bring them back to to their glory. And um, the reason it's over there is because that's where um, the Willow Run plant, which made a lot of the airplanes for World War Two, is. And it, my grandmother worked there um, back in the day. And they call her, they, they called all the women who worked there Rosie the Riveter. Um, and they literally, they went from making cars to making planes all within a matter of, it seemed like days, but I'm sure it was weeks. And these people just went from making cars to making planes and they did it right there because it was close to the airport and they could roll them off of the assembly line and roll them right out to the runway, do a test flight on them, and then take them to the, the boys on the front lines who needed them. And um, so that's pretty awesome over there. Uh, like I said, my grandmother worked at Will Run uh, as a Rosie the Riveter. So it's uh, pretty awesome to me to be over there. Um, not planning any trips up north this year, but you never know. Could be one or two. So we'll just hit some high spots here and there. Um, I was really kind of bummed because right after I turned off the camera from... Uh, showing you guys some of the sights. The first motorcycle of spring, the first Harley I've seen of spring went by. Um, Harley Davidson is a US uh, motorcycle manufacturer and um, they have a unique sound. So, love my first Harley of the spring. Um, so it's pretty enjoyable. It was a nice day yesterday. It's a pretty day today, though I did hear the wind. I am going to do some more work on my bags. And then I'm going to make up uh, some dinners for the rest of the week because I have to go back to work tomorrow. I don't want to. But I got to. So let's see. Covered works in progress. Covered whips. I've got no finished objects because I haven't finished anything. Uh, other than my bags. So anyway. Um, how many people are excited for the handbrake, uh, cowl? I know I am. I'm looking forward to it. Um, for those of you who don't know, the handbrake cowl was done by Dan Jones of the Bakery Bear. On one of the Bakery Bears. And, um... All the money, all the proceeds from the sale of the handbrake cowl are going towards cancer research. Um, it's one pound for, it costs one pound, which is equal to about a dollar fifty for the United States. Um, which is awesome, so I plan on doing that. Anyway. 
Um, that's it. Again, uh, the Bakery Bears has a podcast. Uh, if you don't know who they are, uh, go watch them. I literally did from start to finish. From start to where I picked up on them at this week. I got it all done. I did my marathon sessions. Um, and that's what I was doing when I was knitting my sweater. So um, I suggest to you that they're awesome. I love them. Um, I also want to do the Messalina shawl. So I've got a lot of things that I want to do. Anyway. I don't know if you can hear that. That's the wind. I am going to let you all go. And I'll see you in a week or two. I'm hoping a week, but I haven't been doing a lot, so I don't just want to sit here and chit-chat. Though I, I love sitting here and chit-chatting with you guys. Um, I want to bring something to the table to show you, you know. So, as of right now, I don't plan on selling my project bags, but that could always change depending. Um, that's it. How have you guys been doing? What you been up to? This lighting is driving me crazy. At least on the phone. So I'm going to let you go so I can upload this and do some more things around here because i got to pre-make some dinners and lunches and stuff. Alrighty? I will talk to you again when, I, when I'm feeling yarny. Bye. Oh, I'm going to insert a picture of me being all relaxed so that you can see.